Now we come to direct ophthalmoscopy. So you're going to use this instrument to examine the optic nerve, the vessels, and the retina. You're going to get a small portion of the view, uh, but it'll be highly magnified. So here are the parts of the direct ophthalmoscope. You usually have something on the handle that's going to control the light and turn it on. You usually have a dial on the front, which you're going to use to select which kind of light you want. Typically you're going to use from the small, medium, and large size dots. You're going to use the medium sized dot most of the time. And you've got a dial on the side in which you can change the lens that is mounted up inside there. The idea behind the lens is if you wear glasses, when you take them off to do the exam, you dial in your prescription so that you are clear. If the patient wears glasses, when they take them off, you dial in their prescription as well. So if they have nearsightedness, you dial in a minus prescription. Usually you can guess around minus five if they don't know. If you have nearsightedness, you dial in another minus five. If they're farsighted, you dial in a plus five. If you're farsighted, another plus five. That's going to get you close, and then you'll adjust with your finger once you're actually in there. So next, we want to make sure that we position ourselves. So a lot of times people will stand up, uh, and then they're coming down on a patient. That's not going to work out. So we want to raise the chair, make sure that you guys are at the same height. Okay? You want the patient to pick a distant target that they can look at with the eye that you're not going to examine. And you want to come in at the right angle of attack. So you're looking at about 10 to 15 degrees, and that's going to get you pretty close to the nerve. Now remember, you don't need to start all the way back here and kind of creep in. You can start pretty close to the patient and you want the light somewhere on their pupil. You want your eye looking through the hole to see that. You should see a red reflex at this point. And when you come in, you got to warn the patient that I'm going to invade your personal space doing this, but I need to get close so that I can get a good view. Because if you're looking from back here, you might, if you're lucky, see one vessel, but you're not going to see much more than that. So you've dialed in the prescription for you and for the patient, and basically, at this point, usually you'll use one hand to hold the lid. It's also handy so you don't come too close to them. And you come right in watching that light reflex, and make any fine adjustments you have to until the vessels appear crisp. And you want to be moving your head so that the fulcrum here is the view of the retina. Okay, keep looking straight ahead. And you really do have to get close, but if you get too close, you'll bump into your hand. So don't worry. Now, you want to assess the nerve, follow the vessels into it if you can't find it. You may want to look at the macula as well, but typically you're going to get most information about the nerve with this. When it comes time to do the other eye, don't do this, or the patient is going to write you up for some kind of a you know, sexual abuse type of thing. You're going to end up kissing the patient. But switch your hand and use your left hand when you're examining their left eye. And you come in again from the outside. It takes some practice, but it's something that's worth learning how to do because you're going to find these in every eMERGE bay, in every family medicine office, and they are very helpful for looking at the disc for things like pallor, swelling, you can pick up a lot with it.